So one of the great teachings of our people uh, that was left to us from Chaos was that when he went through the territory, he saw that there was this uh, uh, couple who were not getting along. And this, uh, this uh, young, this, this man was mistreating his, uh, his relative. And he <clears throat> um, saw this and said, you're not doing what you need to do. You're not teaching your children how to get along. So he transformed them into stone. And the message that was left, his name was Tichwalatza. So Tichwalatza, the stone of Tichwalatza is left behind to teach future generations that we must learn to live together in a good way. And now, as all members of the human family that share this beautiful part of this, uh, this uh, planet Earth of ours, we have to learn to live together in a good way. When I was um, um, getting involved with the, uh, with the movement, I joined quite a few uh, tremendous history-making movements, and they all related to the grassroots movements. Art, Art Manuel, my good friend here, we worked together in uh, Montreal. And um, I want, we winded up uh, uh, coming back to our own territories. And uh, I did, I had the honor of working here at Nisconlet. And we were a part of a true history making when we uh, helped organize the Constitution Express that uh, moved across Canada. And uh, the lobby force was so powerful in the international community and all across Canada with all political stripes, the unions, the general public. We succeeded in getting Aboriginal rights and entitlements included in the Constitution of Canada. We organized a, a child care caravan that went down and uh, uh, picked up a lot of people all the way down to, uh, to Vancouver, and we surrounded Grace McCarthy's uh, house, created um, uh, a lot of public awareness about uh, the necessity to have Aboriginal control over child welfare. And we uh, succeeded in doing a lot of that. So the people's movement is very, very strong because when the people get involved, it's because something is disturbing them so much that they have to move, they have to get involved, they have to get engaged. And when we're witnessing what is going on around us in this dark era of industrialization that is going on today, threatening the life, sust the life sustaining gifts that we've been provided, you know, to live a good life. Our, our salmon is at the center of that. So when we're talking about fracking, Enbridge, Site C damming, when we're talking about fish farms, when we're talking about uh, fracking, anything that the industrial world is doing, we're seeing them bring great harm to the natural world. And they are not following natural laws. This has to stop. This global economy of ours is going to collapse under its own weight. Because this planet only has a finite number, a finite amount of those fossil fuels. And when we run out, it's going to, we're going to face not only, not only a, a total collapse of the, the global economy, but a world that will be unbearable to live in. That's how serious it is. Global warming is no joke. Global warming is real, and it's, we're, we're unable to really uh, stop global warming, but if we feel that overwhelming um, despair, 
and just sit back and say, well, gee, it's too late, we're screwed, there's nothing else we can do, then that's not really helping, is it? Every movement, everything that we do is important and counts. That moves, thing in, moves things in the right direction. When I uh, was invited to come and speak at this gathering, I got, hello, I was, um, I, felt, I felt I felt a need, you know, to really be a part of this. And I was, re I was, I was delighted that uh, Don and Janice invited, uh, invited me and welcomed me to, to this territory again and, uh, and share, share something that, that we might uh, grab onto and hold on to and help motivate ourselves, energize ourselves, and move forward with. I'm a part of the uh, Net Pen Farm Salmon Boycott, and everything that we do is very consistent. It's a very peaceful movement. It's a movement that, uh, that goes to the real decision makers who are out there. Because we know that the, the federal government, the provincial government, and uh, the uh, aquaculture industry that's uh, destroying our coast and threatening our wild salmon are not going to do anything. The only people who are really going to do something are the consumers. So we decided that we're going to be consistent, never give up, continue going out to those uh, stores and restaurants, and uh, promote uh, consumers, bring, bring consumer awareness about how contaminated those uh, uh, products that the open net farm salmon industry produces. And every time we see somebody new who shows up and we provide them with the uh, documentation and information to help them make up their minds, to take their own generic measure, then um, they're very grateful and they say thank you. So each one person that we change their mind about their, their buying habits, 10 other people follow because they talk to their uh, family members, they talk to their friends, and then they make up their mind after they find out and it's a ripple effect. So don't never despair when you're out there. Then just show up, just keep showing up, and that's the kind of consistency that's going to win. Because people, up, people wind up watching us in action and saying, wow, are they still here? Yeah, we're not going away either. <laughs> so those are, those are some of the things that, uh, that, uh, that need to be done. And, and it needs to be local. People don't wait for anybody else to get out there and they just get out there and do it themselves in the local, following their own agendas, following a guideline that is uh, available on a website called www.farmsalmonboycott.com. But when I, um, when I thought about coming up here and, uh, and listening to that and, and really seeing that, that message, wild salmon convergence, convergence, we need to converge like crazy. It's, a, it's really important that we do this. How are, what are some of the ways that we can do that? People are scattered all over the place. Um, there, it's like a huge dam, and you got one uh, toe in, in in the dam over here, and your finger up there, and your other foot over there, and you over, and it's it's breaking up all over the place. And uh, everybody's uh, everybody's caught uh, wondering how much, how many resources do I have, you know, to contribute? Everybody is saying, I, I need help over here. I need help over there. I need help here. So. How do, we, how do we contend with that? 
There is also the, uh, uh, the, those issues that were raised earlier today about do we work with band councils or not. There are also those issues working with non-government uh, 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 agencies, NGOs. You know, are they turncoats? You know, are some of them giving up? Are there some of them giving in to Harper? He goes in and audits them and so they heal and they don't do anything? Are we going to turn our backs on them? I am one person, a Stalo who wants to do something to make a change. I don't belong to any organization. So Harper can't control me. Nobody can control me, except my wife. <laughs> but um, we, st we still need to be very conscientious about not burning any bridges. As an individual who is active, I open the door to anybody who is willing to help. I don't care if that's an NGO, I don't care if that's a politician, I don't care if that's a, 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 an elected bound band council of any kind. I will welcome anybody who wants to push, give that push back in the right direction. And we can do this. We can rally them. The people, especially the young people, are really important to engage. We have to find creative ways to get them involved and engaged. How do we do that? Um, I'm sure that uh, everybody has a lot of really good ideas about how and what can be done to do this. Because the people, the young people today, are really watching what's going on and they're not stupid. They're seeing that the governments are not governing anymore. They're really w seeing, you know, climate change every day. It's plastered all over the uh, social networks. It's in the news. It's everywhere they turn. And they're frightened. They want, they want a good future ahead of them. So I think it's, uh, I think it's important for us to uh, to use that youthful energy and that desire, that will, to move ahead to create a better world for, uh, for future generations in honor of our ancestors, because our ancestors are watching over us. When we did this ceremony here, we're not alone. We're surrounded. We're surrounded by the ancestors here because we started this work in a good way. So. Um, I, um, I thought about, uh, about pulling people together and I, and I have one idea that I think may really work well and that is to organize, mobilize a wild sand caravan that would head from, that would go from the headwaters all the way down to Vancouver and to Victoria. And what I have in mind, or what I have this vision of seeing this undertaken, it would happen in the springtime. It's in the springtime when the smolts are heading down the river. And so we would be following the spirit of wild salmon, and guided by the spirit of wild salmon. As I mentioned, and as everybody here sitting around here knows, wild salmon is at the center of this dark, menacing, threatening, industrial storm that is hitting BC. So whether it's Kinder Morgan, Enbridge, Imperial Mines, all of it, they see that Wild salmon is at the center of this. So when we head down from the uh, he when we go down from the headwaters, the idea is to hold community gatherings in every town. 
2015, the spring of 2015, there's an election in the air. The federal government is going to, you know, uh, hold their election. And uh, all the political parties are going to want to get elected. So as we move down from the headwaters all the way down to Vancouver and Victoria, we could be um, asking each and every one of those uh, political parties, where do you really stand on all these issues? What is your position? How are you going to protect wild salmon? What kind of changes to laws and regulations are you going to put into force? We'd hit the municipalities and ask them, where do you stand, you know, regarding Kinder Morgan, Enbridge? Where do you stand with mining? And any other threats that are, that are going on with our wild salmon? And as we move down, we'll accumulate and generate more and more interest. And we'll be sending messages ahead of time, you know, to the next town that the caravan is on it. We'd have workers who would um, help organize and get prepared for the caravan that would be hitting the next town. There would be two tributaries, one that would head down from the headwaters of this area, this is a beautiful area here, the last uh, Great Salmon Run, Adams Lake. This is a good place to begin here. And uh, one caravan could head down uh, the canyon, get into Mont uh, Montreal, into Vancouver, and, uh, and then uh, go over to, um, to Victoria from there. And the other caravan would, leave, would go from uh, Lillooet, head down the Duffy Lake Road, go down to Squamish, and then head over towards um, Seashell, the Powell River, cross over to Campbell River, and head towards Victoria. That's, we would merge just before we get to Victoria, the two caravans, and then we'd have a massive march into, uh, into Victoria, sending the message. Somebody, uh, I was talking with Bonnie uh, Glambeck and she was saying that, uh, that it would be important to have a, a, a kit or a, 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 a kit of tools that each, each community could grab a hold of and put to good use about the message that needs to be given on all those counts. And those messages would address everything that is threatening our wild salmon. And we'd stay on message, be consistent, and be assertive and powerful all the way down. Not only that, what it is to develop a set of tools and some creative ideas about what the people in all those areas would be able to do on an ongoing basis. Because once the caravan's over, the work is not complete. It still has to be done until we have in place what we all want. What do we want? We want a green economy. We want a, an economy that is put in place that uses sustainable, clean energy that is enabled, promoted, and supported by law and regulation at all levels of government. That's what we want. An economy that will create long-term employment instead of the boom and bust experience that we have with the fossil fuel industry. And so the idea of getting people mobilized is to have a council or have a, have a, a, a solid working group would, that would work together on all the logistics so that things run smoothly with this caravan 
that would mobilize the people all the way down to uh, Vancouver and, uh, and Victoria. And this, this working group would, uh, would uh, have a coordinator who would work full time on, uh, on, on pulling this off. I think that um, when we talk about the communities uh, hosting, you know, the gatherings that would happen all the way down there, we would need to call upon uh, city, bank, bank council support, um, and um, get, to, get the people engaged and involved at that local level whoever it is, you know, would step forward. And the vision, that vision that we have of saving wild salmon would result not only in saving wild salmon, but all life that is associated with it. This magnificent gift that we've been blessed with on this uh, planet, the wild salmon, keeps turn returning and returning and returning. They give, and they give, and they give. And so the inspiration is to give great gratitude to the wild salmon as to what they're giving us, but also carry a responsibility of what do we give back to the salmon. We have to give back to the salmon a clean environment. We, give, we have to give back to salmon a gov governments that will honor, support, and enable industries to have a good place for not only the salmon, but all it supports, and that includes human beings. So um, that's, that's, why, that's the, uh, the, the, the main uh, reason why I came to uh, this gathering. When I uh, looked at the list of the people who would be showing up here, I saw that we would have an alliance of people from all backgrounds with the First Nations people taking the leadership with this. We would have the First Nations Alliance. We would have uh, all those there, uh, people who signed the Save the Fraser River um, declaration um, and we would we would ensure and we would uh, make it possible for the all levels of government to really feel the power of the people the power of the river people merged with the coastal people coming together as one united powerful force that would give the right pushback to save our wild salmon. Oh, that's what I have to share today. <laughs>